can't help but feel that she'd be funnier if she had Asperger's. Or at least respect joke structure more. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> because the thing about Asperger's, people with Asperger's, is they become hyper-focused on, like, one particular thing, and they have, like, a really big no, talent. I no, I had a buddy uh, back home, his brother at Asperger's, and he would just spend most of the days, like, sitting at his computer in the living room and we would always just chill in the living room playing xbox and he would sit at the computer facing away with headphones on either watching like people play through video games or like reading about anime stuff that kind of thing yeah and he would just be going and he would like whisper to himself and shit like that and then all of a sudden randomly he would just be like hello guys and he would do like this He'd be like, have you ever heard of, and then just say some anime or video. It was so funny because I hung out with Ryan at his house for probably, probably when I started, 16, 17, probably like seven or eight years. Like, and <laughs> he just, he like probably learned my name both like six or seven months before like Ryan moved into a place with me and like we didn't really hang out over there ever again he like never knew my fucking name but I <laughs> had hour long conversations it was mostly just him explaining something to me and he would just word shit like super epic he would just like d- describe some robot in like a game or some shit in detail. Just, like super epically like you were reading it in like a book just he would just be like or he'd be talking about a show and he'd be like, imagine. <laughs> and then like, and he would just go into the universe and shit. And it was great. But he also like, obviously based on like the, you know, didn't really pick up on social cues. But, yeah. he, and, but he was very open. Like he knew it. He would just be like, I have Asperger's and I don't understand sarcasm. Were you being sarcastic? Or like we would laugh at something on a show and he'd be like, what's the joke? I don't get it. <laughs> but if you would keep going on and on and on, like you could get to the point where you weren't looking at him. Yeah. And he was still just going and going and going. Eventually you'd just be like, I'm done talking about this now, man. And he'd be like, okay. And then it would be over. Like he never took it personally or anything like that. And once I figured that out, I was like, all right, cool. Now I know how to get in and out of conversations with this kid. We had an ass where you guys at the at the my my first my first regular open mic, and uh, it took him forever to figure out how to do jokes. Like he kept he he would just say stuff, and then everyone would wait for him to say something crazy, and then they'd laugh. And then I went up to him and I go, listen, hey, dude, oh, well, you, this is what you, why don't you go tell street jokes? Go learn some street oh jokes. Oh, my God. She brings it all back around. All right, that, Ben Shapiro. That being autistic is tough, but it's better than having polio. That's, okay. that's what she's saying because of anti-vaxxers. That's, but, but, but polio is like a really hard game, though. She, I... Polio is a very hard game to play. Well, that's what she's saying. She's saying autism is hard, but it's not as hard as polio. So get your kids vaccinated. Polio. Oh, <laughs> polio. I like water polio better. That's why how that's how Christopher Reeve uh, broke his polio. neck. Is polo even a real thing that's really played? Like where they ride around on fucking horses still Christopher to this Reeve. day? Reeve. That's what Chris. That's Christopher Reeve, man. That's how he lost his. Really, was playing polo. He was playing polio, and then he got it. No. <laughs> No, he, he broke his he neck. He fell and broke yeah. his neck off of a horse playing polo? Yeah. That's crazy. And he eventually died from an I knew infected he, I bed knew, sore. Yeah, I knew he broke his neck. That's the original Batman guy, right? Superman. Superman, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I forget what I was going to say. They're oh, all, yeah, yeah. They're all equally as gay. I told the Asperger guy, I go, well, you should go out and just, just tell street jokes, you know, just learn street jokes and tell those, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you'll yeah. learn how, how jokes work. You'll figure out how jokes work if you just concentrate on it a lot. And then he came like the next week and just told street jokes on stage. And I was like, well, it's not what it meant. Yeah. But eventually, after I swear like a year, he came in and had like a good set. I don't know if he wrote the jokes himself, but he figured out how to deliver them for sure. So I think he had written like a couple of jokes, though. Well, they, which is a, high functioning autism is another term for annoying. Yeah, like, high-functioning autism, especially at, like, her level, it's just, like, when people 
It's mainly when people criticize The Office. They always talk about, like, it, Jim's just picking on an autistic guy, <laughs> Dwight. And it's like, I see what you're saying, but Dwight runs a farm and has a full-time sales job. How do they job. know he's like, autistic? Well, it's just based on his mannerisms because he's nerdy and he gets hyper focused on things like that. Yeah. And like he's not good at picking up on social cues. And like he looks up to Michael and doesn't see the bullshit for a long. Like he has spectrum. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Type yeah, yeah, yeah. things, and it's it's just something people use to extra criticize it. But, but it's like, like banging like two hot girls at the same time. Dude, it's. <laughs> the man <laughs> runs a fucking farm like, <laughs> and has a full-time job like i always think who of, cares what's his name make uh, fun of him he is a successful enough autistic person to just get made fun of fuck it yeah, my like, brother likes that one show with the nerds and stuff big bang theory yeah yeah and i go is that the fucking autistic show i go is that the asperger show and then he's like no just there's just one character who has it and I was like, oh, okay. And then you watch it and you're like, no, there's just one character that does it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, rest, the rest is just one that it's clear and the rest you got to put some time in the show. Yeah, that, she's like, I met this chick in Chicago. She's like, Johnny Galecki fucked me on a pinball machine. Although the funny thing is the autistic one in Big Bang Theory is the, is the reason that show like carries on him and the racist Indian character. That's <laughs> just like a uh, guy doing a racist Indian caricature. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so at a one, certain point during the Nick Cannon interview, um, he starts just going off about how he, how black people are the people, the Professor Griffith goes off about how black people are the ones he's trying to enlighten, and he's like, and the black people are the ones who give him the most opposition, but then he starts going into all these weird details about something, I think he got, like, robbed and beaten up or something like that, because then he starts going, he goes off like, he says, he's talking about black people. He goes, who robs me? Shoots the window out of my car. Who are the people who burned my house down? Who are the people who poisoned me with the drink? Who are the people that made me impotent? <laughs> this was the professor guy, right? Yeah, or, okay, the same was... people I'm trying to save. Can't walk, piss and blood for speaking the truth? Then he also says, do you think they would allow a man like Professor Griff to to strive and survive and be successful in front of young black men, not on drugs, not gay, a vegan, I have a wife. Do you think they want that image out there? Uh, the then he goes, Nick Cannon goes, but why am I allowed to do that? Dick Gregory told me I was dangerous. <laughs> Who's Dick Gregory? Dick Gregory's like an old black comic who used to march <laughs> back during the civil dangerous. rights. <laughs> yeah. Dick Gregory told me I was dangerous. Dick Gregory was probably like a hundred when he said that to you. Dr Dick Gregory or Gregory? Is it two G's Gregory? Yeah, Gregory, just one G probably. Did he also write books? Uh, he was a comic. He was probably the first black comic to play Playboy. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that's an autobiography. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, auto. Professor Griff has an interesting question. Why are we following the Gregorian calendar and throwing off our whole time signature? It's serious. October should be the eighth month. Ah! I love this line. The thing, Professor Griff says, the thing that keeps us alive will kill them. The foods that vibrate on a high level, the minerals, that kind of thing. And then Nick Cannon says, we get power from the sun. They die on the sun. The sun kills them. It empowers us. Does he think black people can stand on the sun and yeah. be okay? <laughs> then Professor Gress goes, with a high form of alchemy, we can get melanated and mellow at night. But when we get serious, we get it, we get it in that sun and get turned up and He's lit. Is he trolling him at this point? <laughs> because we got the melanin to do that and the pineal gland that allows us to astroplane and do all the things that we do. <laughs> I the pineal gland. <laughs> Always got to throw that in there. <laughs> Let's bring it in. Yeah, he's always bringing in the penis. <laughs> Can't talk to a black guy for fucking an hour without him bringing up that dick thing. 